namaste and welcome back to grow with the jan family today our hearts are so heavy uh, for the numbers of covid cases and deaths um, in india uh, you know it's just been so hard uh, for us to see it being here being so far away um, and the numbers are spiking so every day record high for the amount of cases and record highs for the amount of deaths some worldwide records um and and you're already in the spot number two and we are praying that you don't reach spot number one and part of it like if you didn't see our other video we talked about how some of these political rallies correlate not just festivals but it seemed to be more political rallies that people were... Festivals surprisingly went down. Yeah, there wasn't huge spikes around festivals. Um, I guess people weren't going as much and they, the ones that did go were being careful. We've seen pictures of people in farmers protests without masks on, um, you know, at these political rallies without masks on. Um, the one politician that wanted to bring dead bodies to the rally like just right now it should be only essentials only essential people doctors you know um it just you can't have everybody out in the streets all the time you can't be holding big rallies you can't pretend like the coronavirus isn't there because it's not going to go away when you pretend no you have to whether you have your vaccine or not you still have to practice six feet away. You still have to practice social distancing. You have to wear a mask. And we're actually mm -hmm. gonna put a link below on how to wear it properly because we've seen people with it down here. It's not what's sliding and they're trying mm -hmm. to push it up or they don't care and they're just not pushing it up because they're pretending they're wearing a mask. It's not helping. I mean, part of this, the reason we're doing this is we know um, Weon has done a video about why the U.S. is testing India's resolve, and you know our, how how that friendship seems to have gotten a little bit of a strain now that um, President Trump has is no longer in office and President right. Biden is. So we know Biden, you know, stopped the reserves of the the uh, the resources for the vaccine to kind of make sure everybody here got it first. Okay. okay, but now the numbers are spiking in India and now they're struggling and this should be like the first thing, releasing those raw materials. It shouldn't be a question. You shouldn't wait until everybody's harping on you before you release it. Right. You know, India is one of those countries, A, you need it to help fight China. And B, they are the people that come to rescue other countries, sometimes whether they have some of the resources or not. Right. When when her 9-11 happened, India came. When Hurricane Katrina happened, India came. This is not the first time. When COVID started, they actually sent us medicine at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I know he wanted so many millions of people, you know, hundreds of thousands of people to be vaccinated while he was the first few days of office. I know it was a political ploy. And it breaks my heart to think that people in India were dying before politics. Right. Not just for Indian rallies, but for politics here in the U.S. Um, you know, being our family is from both places, that really breaks my heart that the... The friendship seems to have strained um, in the past few months. We are hoping that there are no more political rallies, that elections, maybe high court needs to stop elections or postpone them for a few months um, and make it back to don't shut the country down necessarily, but only essential workers, only people that need to be there you know, people that are, um, like here, we had our supermarkets were open, my husband's work was considered uh, essential, doctors were considered essential, but, you know, churches were closed. Mm -hmm. um, and even now, they're like limited, you have to reserve time to go there, um, hair salons closed, stuff that wasn't like an everyday need, 
was not open. You couldn't just go to the mall and shop here. You couldn't go um, to a lot of places. And, and you kind of need that. Schooling was all virtual. Oh. My husband does all, he goes to work, but all of his meetings he does virtually from his office where he doesn't have anybody visit him. You know, do what you can virtually. Only essential workers should be out there. And with masks on, essential working and with social distancing essential working um you just you really have to like shut it down there can't be all these rallies um but needless to say the u.s we do feel like has part in it i think this is kind of what they're getting at on we on is that you know where were they where were where was the u.s you know before this spike got really bad and why is it taking so long to get help because they're sitting on 40 million AstraZeneca vaccines that they're talking about sending to some places that are struggling um India is number two India is number two yeah. I mean that amount of vaccines could send them in a better place you know, I'm, I know there's some other countries that are also struggling, but India is hitting record highs. So I do think that they need to send as many of those shots as they absolutely can. Because yeah. here, we're only taking the Moderna shot, the Pfizer shot, and some people are still taking the Johnson Johnson shot. Um, and my husband and I went the other day, and literally um, there was one other person in the office waiting to get their shot. And I've seen people posting or emailing like, oh, have you gotten your shot? If you haven't gotten your shot, we have a bunch of spaces available open. We have shots available, we just need arms. So if we have more than enough Moderna and Pfizer shots, why are we sitting on these AstraZeneca shots when India needs them right now, needs yeah. all the help they can get? Um, so that's start this up. The pandemic has been a litmus test for alliances. It has separated friends from partners. You see, a partnership is based on terms and conditions, but friendship is unconditional. And one country is treading this fine line with India. And we have to say, it is not doing a good job with it. We're talking about the United States of America. Is it a friend or is it a partner? Washington yeah, sees right India as a key ally in the Indo-Pacific. It turns on the charm offensive when needed. Like on climate change, the U.S. needs India's support for climate action, so it dispatched John Kerry to Wu New Delhi. But when the shoe is on the other foot, Washington changes tack. Let's look at four U.S. actions in the last couple of months and ask ourselves, are these things you would expect from an ally? Number one, the ban on the export of vaccine raw materials. We know that India is the biggest vaccine maker in the world, but to make these vaccines, you need raw materials. And most of these come from the United States. But here's the problem. The U.S. has banned the export of these items. Back in February, Joe Biden invoked the U.S. Defense Production Act. It's a wartime law. It diverted all resources to America's vaccine production. So none of it was available for export. Now, Washington yeah. insists that there is no explicit embargo, but the supply of 35 key ingredients has been disrupted. India has raised these issues multiple times with the U.S. Ambassador Taranjit Singh Sandhu flagged it as soon as Joe Biden invoked the act. Foreign Minister S. Shankar raised it during his phone call with Antony Blinken. But the U.S. response has been disappointing. Joe Biden has said he understands India's needs. But in the middle of shortages yeah, and deaths, understanding does not count for much. Yeah, exactly. Also think back to the HCQ craze of 2020, hydroxychloroquine. It was India that exported 50 million tablets mm -hmm. to the U.S. So Without this was America's question. chance to repay right. that favor. Instead, Washington chose vaccine nationalism. I mean, she's right. Like, this breaks my heart to see, like, the U.S. not only stopped raw materials, but they've kind of waited and waited for not just india but other people to kind of say like hey you're holding on to raw materials you're holding on to vaccines why are you not releasing them 
Right. Um, just the other day, my husband and I drafted a letter to Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, that we would like him to release these vaccines to India, as many as possible, um, to help them through this. And we'll actually post a clip of it. If you live here in the U.S., and you would like to send him a letter, you can draft your own or you can add your name to ours. Um, the more he hears it, I think, hopefully, the more the message will get The out. more the message will get through. You would think Vice President Kamala Harris would be jumping on this right now because half of her family comes from India. Um, but it's not election time, so, right. you know. Anyways, this is when everybody needs to come together. The U.S. have seemed to have gotten over the hump where a good chunk of people have been vaccinated here. Like I said, there's a lot of people that are choosing maybe not to, and but there's still a lot of vaccines out there if people want to take it. And we recommend that you do if you're here in the U.S. Um, get the vaccine. Just get it. And you still have to social distance. You still have to wear a mask inside. Um, yeah, like Nana. Right. My mom, we told her if she wanted to come visit, she needed to come with a mask, and she couldn't sit close to everybody, that she needed to sit at least six feet away, um, and not hugging the children. And she has her shot now, and so she's asking to come and give the children hugs, and we're like, no. You, you have to kind of take the emotional part out of it. Um, we've seen pictures of people dying of COVID with the entire family surrounding them. As much as you want to say your goodbyes, I would think they would be horrified if they knew that they took you with them because they gave you COVID as they're dying. Like, yeah. you can't. You just can't. You can't have everybody at the hospital waiting to see what's going to happen. You can't have people surrounding the person with COVID. Like, they need to quarantine. Um, and if somebody in your house has it, you should all be quarantined so that you don't spread it to everybody else. Yeah. Um, like we said, like, if my mom comes, the kids are not vaccines. So until they get a vaccine, um, if she comes and is inside the house, she's wearing a mask and so are we. It's a precaution, but we're willing to take any precautions right now because, for one, none of us have been sick since lockdown. And yeah. our lockdown has been kind of lifted and it comes in waves, you know. If we get a spike, everything gets shut down again. Um, to essential workers. And that's yeah. how it should be in India right now. Essential workers, there should be no political rallies. There should be no festivals. There should be no large gatherings. You go to work, if you are an essential worker, you work with a mask and you keep your distance. Anybody else should be working from home, doing school from home, um, and only going out for necessities like food. Uh, as much as Anjie and I would like to come to India and eat street food all the time, this is not the time to do it. No cricket matches, no political rallies, virtual, virtual, and just, just get through this right now. Hopefully, Biden hears our voice and sends some of these vaccines over. What else have we been doing, Anjie? Yeah. Um, we went to the Jain Temple mm -hmm. and we prayed for India because right now they're in a tight situation. Right now yeah. it's, it's bad. Yeah, pray for the people that have it, pray for the people that don't, pray that everybody wears a mask and social distancing, um, pray that the high court hears our message and puts it on basically a lockdown. I, I, like we said, we don't wanna see the whole country locked down. People have to work, but it needs to be essential workers. It needs to be, you know, doctors. It needs to be people that are providing food to others. It just can't be everybody in the streets. Um, it just can't right now. You guys need to get through this. And part of it is, I, I blame the U.S. I, I blame the political rallies, for sure. But you also have to point the finger at yourselves. And and that means if you haven't been wearing a mask, if you haven't gotten your shot, if you haven't been social distancing, if you're one of those people that we've seen in a picture with your mask down below your nose, or you didn't have a mask on while you were protesting, or celebrating, or rallying, 
you are part of the problem. The lady that didn't want to wear the mask in the car and they got pulled over and then cried later, she is part of the problem. This is not going away. Right, and the thing I like about virtual is you'll see the class and you'll see people with masks below their nose. Yes, please. You need one, there's a clip, we'll put it on there that um, shows you a, a great way to wear your mask appropriately. Um, ours, the ones that we have, have the wire here. The wire is great because I, I think that it. makes it stick on better. Yeah, and um, I have one that like goes down by my neck, so you can like tuck it in your shirt too, right. and then it goes over my nose clips and over my ears, and um, yeah, that's, I, no matter if this pandemic is over, we have not gotten any sickness, not a cough, not a cold, not a fever. These kids have been at the doctor's office every two to three weeks for months in flu season. This mask wearing, unless I'm outside in the backyard or someplace where people are not close by, even if everybody is vaccinated, I, I still, inside, definitely gonna wear a mask, even yeah. when this, this waves of this is over, because like the flu, it's never gonna go away. You're gonna get a different strand of it. People are gonna you know, have to take a different vaccine. Um, they're gonna have to tweak it for other strands. It's going to be a, all the time, so definitely you have to keep on it. Social distance, washing hands, virtual as much as you can, only necessities for, to go out for. You just got to do it. So here at the Jan family, we were going to have the kids, the boys come and talk about what they would like to do. And I know Jaden said he'd like to send India some masks. Um, Noah, I don't know what Noah would say, but toys probably. But here, we would like to send the last two years money that we've made off of YouTube. It's been in an account, um, actually waiting for time. We were trying to find um, kind of something to do with children, orphanage adoption, um, kind of, we wanted to give back to the kids in India, we didn't find an organization that we really trusted. Um, and then we were planning to make a trip there before all this happened, um, which we would have donated that money while we were there. And that didn't happen thanks to COVID, China. And so we thought, well, maybe this is the opportunity. We were thinking about sending masks. My husband found some oxygen ventilators online that we could order, but we weren't sure where to, where to send them. Um, so we know Modi G has uh, set up like an account for people to donate. And so we are going to donate our money and hopefully that will buy some ventilators or will buy some masks or um, will help some people through. It's not a lot. It's what happens when you do reactions. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to do this for India and we will be sending that letter to Biden um, as much as we can through the snail mail, through the email, through the Twitter, through whatever we can um, till he hears it. And like we said, if you're here in the U.S., please do the same. Yeah. Um, the more the U.S. can do right now for India, I think it will hopefully help them get over this hump. And I know some other countries have done the same. Um, actually, hold on. I was looking this up. Now we actually haven't seen, and I hope they've already sent it. We know they've talked about it online. We've heard them say that they're sending stuff, um, but we haven't actually seen anything. Uh, Germany, we know, sent oxygen plants. Um, Saudi Arabia sent liquid oxygen. Some other places said they would send stuff. They were talking to India, like Pakistan and China, so they were talking to India about how they could help. But um, Singapore sent oxygen tanks. Um, UK sent ventilators. Um, and the US, hopefully, is still working on, not only, they said they're planning to send oxygen supplies, 
uh, drug treatments. I know the raw materials is the big thing, but we would like, and, and we know I'm not, I know we're not the only one that's been asking mm -hmm. Biden about this, is the, the AstraZeneca doses send as many 40 million you're sitting on right now i mean even if you need to send to a couple other countries you could easily send half or more i would like you to send all of it just because our hearts in india too but you need to send them yeah i don't know why you're sitting on this politics i hate politics when when it comes to stuff like this because I feel like that's what people do. And like she yeah. said, on we, I'm like, is, are you a friend or are you just a business partner? And it's only when it's convenient for you. Or when it's on TV. Right. Or when people are like sh bashing you because you're not doing it. Or other countries saying like, what the hell? Yeah. Because we've seemed to have come down. Our wave of COVID has, is getting better here. But... Anyways, like we said, we hope the U.S. continues to help India in as many ways as they can, um, but you also have to help yourself. So don't forget your masks, and hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.